Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Surreal Estate. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, obviously, in the aftermath of last, last episode, we're seeing uh, the Roman agency not in a good place in many different regards. In particular, well, the agency in general, but also Luke. Because, well, he's got to deal with the fact that this is a public scrutiny, all these articles and everything being warning people, hey, stay away from the Roman agency because they are connected to two tragedies, and so a lot of their clients bail on them, which even Luke tries to have a more positive spin and just tries to be like, right, like, we could be dicks about it, but it's like, no, nah, let's let's be the grown-ups, and like, obviously, um, Bob Livingston is going to get like one of their things, and it's like, right, we just won't, he'll have to be the one that has to disclose the fact is that uh, this place has like a ghost that has like goat legs or something that comes out at exactly like 12.03 every night, so it's kind of like their little sly middle fingers to the respective people that are going to be selling the houses that they sell. But it's not just that. He's also dealing with the Megan thing because he doesn't know Megan's been possessed by Rhodey. So it's like, right, their circumstances are what they are. So it's kind of like he's just he probably feels like they are, you know, it's coming at the wrong time because it's like his issues with like it's just it's one thing after another. Plus, I think in his mind and we kind of dive into this, the more psychology angle to uh, Luke is that he feels like everyone in his life is bound to leave him. So it's, he has abandonment issues. So. Especially because he really likes Megan, and just for everything to kind of go like, like pear shape immediately, it just I think immediately in his mind he starts thinking like, right, maybe it's just an inevitability that everyone in my life is always going to be p pushed away from me just because of the natural. Like you know, he starts internalizing like, right, our business is suffering because I am the way I am. And now, like, maybe my relationship is in that same regard. He's like, I thought things were good. And just, like, we never found out what the fight was that him and Megan had. But we now know it was, like, it wasn't her. It was the roadie in control. Uh, so, because she actually, we find out later on, she hasn't been in control since the party. Like, the moment, like, her hands started shaking, like, the last thing she saw was, like, Susan on stage. And ever since then, like, she's blacked out. Because even later on, she checks her phone and says, wait. I, like, because I, she's like, I haven't talked to Luke. Like, and it's like, oh, wait. I've got missed 12 missed calls. Like, how is that possible? So there's that angle to it but that all kind of coincides because luke's like you know trying to take time away to figure things out about how they're going to handle the business going forward and so obviously phil zoe and august all kind of agree that susan has to be the one that talks to him because it's like because she's like yeah it's uh, not his fault it's like tell luke it's like no we mean tell luke because out of anyone maybe susan will be the one that could actually get through because it's like regardless if it comes it's not going to like even if we say it he's not going to listen because he beats himself up too much so obviously he goes bowling with his dad and uh, obviously the whole conversation about like you know striking the pins in just the right way and everything you know the physics of it all uh, but then Luke starts thinking about the fact is like, what if I was a normal kid? Like, would I have to be, would it like, be, him, being who he is has cost him so much. It's cost him the current business that he's had, like, uh, any form of a normal life. Even believing on some level it's his fault his mom left, which his dad was like, you were a normal kid. And even if you weren't, it wouldn't change the fact is that I love you so much. And the fact is, your mom, because he was like, yeah, but mom said, like, I was a disappointment in this. He was like, that doesn't sound like her. Because for him, it's like, your mom had her issues. Like, her leaving had nothing to do with you, had nothing to do with me. It just, it was on her. And the fact of the matter is, your mom, kind of, he was like, she had her issues, but she was never cruel. So that kind of leads, uh, lends itself back to what I thought before. Whatever it is, like, I think she left because she was trying to protect Luke. Um... Maybe that's what it is, because even her, his dad was like, Carl was like, I still love her, despite everything, like, maybe I never even stopped loving her, and even, you know, Luke being like, maybe, you know, that must have been tough, like, continuing to love someone that left you and your son, like, that's gotta be tough, but... I think at the end of the day, I think it is back to what I said, like her being so nasty to him when they've met, like after all these years and her calling him in disappointment, like at the end of what was that episode three, I had a feeling I was like, she definitely did out on purpose because she doesn't want Luke mixed up in this. Like whether this trails back to the reason why she came to the house in the first place is because maybe it has something to do with the way she like, because I don't know if Luke doesn't really know if it's because it's like I I think that thing that he has seen ghosts and everything I think it's hereditary I think his mom had it too and so she probably thought like right I can protect my she probably because 
I don't, I, maybe Luke went into like when she left his life, but maybe by then that it hadn't really kicked in. So she probably was hoping like, um, the whole, com like it ends up being an interesting point later on. It, the line was like, oh, it skips a generation. That, that was in reference to something else, but maybe his mom was hoping. And then it's like, right, Luke will have a normal childhood. He'll have a normal life because maybe she didn't have a normal upbringing because of this. Like it, maybe it runs in her side of the family or maybe Luke's just special, but I think whatever he has stems from his mom. And I think it's a situation where, because we had the whole conversation about, like, ladies with abilities, like, in this universe. Like, because we talked about, uh, well, we, we've seen Susan's circumstances of the telekinesis and the pyrokinesis. That I'm thinking, like, no, 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 like, it, it probably, he, Luke probably never thought, like, he his mom wasn't around long enough for him to know. Because, like, it's like, yeah, because he talked about it, like, he had a, it was a fairly young age when his mom was out of his life. So... I think it was, like, super young at the time, if I'm not mistaken. Like, like I said, I think they talked about it earlier in the season. I'm just, I'm not, I'm blanking on it right now. But I still believe that's why she left. And she was trying to protect him because something evil drew her to that house. Like, something. Or maybe she, what Luke is doing, inadvertently, maybe he's following in his mom's footsteps. Just, she went about things differently. He's doing it from a realtor standpoint, and she did it from a different standpoint. But you get what I'm trying to say. So... He's dealing with all of that, and um, Susan comes to try and like, hey, it's okay. And she's like, oh, I pulled a little bit, and immediately was kind of like, bam, bam. And it's like, now part of me is also wondering the entire time, like considering like, oh, she had like the, those two spares at the end, and she like jumps up and kind of clicks her heels, and they knock over. I'm like, Did you, were you using your telekinesis the entire time? Were you cheating? Is that what that was? Is that why Luke was almost like, wait, I thought you said you played a few times. Like, are you actually this good, or did she, was she cheating the entire time? I, I, we will never know, right? And it kind of implies like she might have been using her powers the entire time. But Luke's starting to think about changing things up because he ends up bringing up the fact is that the house is the supernatural stuff that they deal with. It's a small portion. And I think that's so interesting. It is that thing of like, it's like any, it's like a TV show, like a, a, a police drama, like, or like, you know, a police procedural. You only see the cases that like the, that unit or whatever, like say like a law and order. You only see the cases they work on in the episode. You never see the countless cases that are going on like in between episodes. It's like they could have done like 15 cases, but you get those 20 some cases in episode uh, season type of thing. So maybe it's something of that nature of like, yeah, like most of our dealings are just like normal houses. The show focuses on the more supernatural, crazy ones, you know, so for him, it's like and even saying like they bring in the least amount of revenue, but they end up being the biggest time consumers and more uh, like frustrating ones to deal with. So he wants to kind of consider going more like mainstream in a sense of just doing regular houses he says save those for october 31st like where they should belong but then susan's because and he's like phil will stay on doing what he does august will most likely get a job at like nasa or something like the fact of the matter is being how smart he is so because the his his brain and how it operates and what his genius like it's like yeah his main reason for sticking around is because of what contraptions he's able to make you know, for dealing with ghosts and everything. And then even saying like, Zoe, she'll probably stick around for a little while, but then eventually she'll get bored. I mean, she'll stick around for the dental, but you know, she'll find something else afterwards. But Susan is like, no, like what we do, I actually think in, a, in, a, in an existential way, we do actually do some good, but it's just that Luke's kind of lost a little faith in what they've done just because it's all kind of come crumbling down. So he decides to look into a house because it seems like it's a normal, normal house because it's a house that he actually knew from the area because he used to cut this lady's grass all the time. He thought he was getting paid by her when in actuality it was his dad, which was, oh, that was actually really sweet because um, his dad felt bad for the lady because no one ever really saw her and that ends up being the, because uh, we see it at the beginning like in the house, she was like a, uh, a teenager and then the moment she stepped out the house, she was rapidly aged. So I thought the place kind of stuck you in the 50s, but it stuck her specifically in the 50s because that's around the time that she was an actual teenager herself. So Luke goes to the house and goes inside and it turned automatically turns you into a teenager. Like I said, I thought it was going to have like a 50s aesthetic, kind of like a little Riverdale-ish or like uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina type of aesthetic. Like I thought it did that for anyone that came in. I didn't realize like, oh no, it just ages you back to whenever you were 16. That, that young, like, you know, oh, you're sweet 16. Like that, that perfect teen, like it's that middle ground, that perfect teenage year of just kind of like you're, you're old enough to kind of like be rambunctious and like doing your your own thing while also not being old enough to have to worry about adult stuff 
So it's like that's what the house does. It traps you there and it gives you everything you want just to make sure you stay there. So obviously Phil finds out about this and so he um, – they can't get in contact with Luke because Luke just wanted a normal house to deal with things to kind of clear his head. And so they follow after him. And the moment they go in there, like, you don't remember why you were there. It's just kind of like turn back into their 16th year old cells, which I think it's so fascinating. The actress who plays Zoe is the only one who got to play the teenage version of herself. I'm a, I mean, we find out age wise, like, I mean, the reason why they did that, because I guess, like, the actress, I, I don't know, like, the actress who plays Zoe's actual age, she might actually be, like, Zoe's actual age, and so, it's like, yeah, you're young enough and youthful enough to actually play your own teenage self, where everyone else, it's like, the, I guess the stereotype of them being cur uh, curmudgeon old men, in, in, you know, even though Phil's only in, like, his mid-30s, uh, but them being cur curmudgeon old men, like, it's like, right, we gotta get different actors to play you, but it's like, because... Uh, cause I thought Zoe would be way older than she is because it turns out like her birthday is like 98. I was like, Oh, you're like super, I, like the way you were talking last episode made it sound like you were already in your thirties or something. It's like, no, you're still in your twenties. That's what kind of confused me in that regard. So, um, but the moment you get in there, you don't remember why you're there. And it's just like, this place has everything anyone would want. Phil has all the books. Uh, August has the computers and the weed. Zoe has, like, you know, like, all the stuff, like, the rebellious stuff that she has. Like, oh, there's a thing for piercings and all the, like, the kind of goth stuff that she's kind of into, which she's kind of talked about uh, before uh, with Susan a couple episodes back. So, and so everyone's kind of, like, enjoying the whole process. But Zoe's the first one to figure it out because the place is an illusion. It's all it's all smoke and mirrors. Uh, and then slowly, one by one, as they all unveil, like, the BS behind the house, Zoe gets flung out. It throws you out the window. Because the thing is, the old lady, like, when she was finally ready to go, she was already an old woman. She was just kind of like, I think she had finally just decided, like, right, I don't want this anymore. And so she just died of natural causes because she was, like, 90 by the time she actually fully left her house. It was keeping her young forever. I'm curious, like, if, it, if you, I guess... Because I guess it's like the moment you step out, the real world hits you. So, like, she picked up where she was. So, it's like... Because that's what I'm wondering. Like, if she had stayed in there forever, like, would she have stayed in there forever? And then the moment she leaves, it's like, oh, actually, you're 150 years old at this point. I'm like, I'm curious, would something like that be possible? Um, or would she have, like, died in the house and then the house would have just automatically spit her out the moment she died? Maybe that's why it finally did let her go. Because it is like a choice thing. It's like you have to like submit to want to stay in that, you know, kind of give in to like being 16 again and staying that way forever. They never really went into the ins and outs of like how that happened. Like what was it just the house itself? Was there a spirit like that took over the house that really caused that? Is it just a su random supernatural phenomenon that happens from time to time? Like maybe it's just like maybe it's not like a, a spirit necessarily, but the house's essence of like, right, like I want someone to stay here forever. I want someone to occupy me forever, like in a more positive light. I want to give you everything you want just so you can stay here forever. Like I it maybe it's just the house itself or you know, or the spirit of it house or whatever feeds off of your or, you know, you being there, you know, it needs an occupant just so it can keep existing. Uh, and hence why it's got all everyone in there. But like I said, um, Zoe figures it out first, then Phil, because he says like every book in there, it, every page is page 339 of Moby Dick. And then even like uh, for um, August, it's like, yeah, all my screwdrivers is because it can't keep up the illusion uh, because it can only, it can give everything, it, because people who want too much, it's hard, like, it's hard to create these fake illusions, now it's easier to occupy one person, because I, at this time, I think it's a little easier for Luke, because all Luke wants is, like, a normal, that's what he's desiring, a normal childhood, not having to deal with, like, the crap that is, like, he's having to deal with as an adult, like, his life, like, he could just stay in this perfect moment of just not having to deal with his dad being gone, his mom out of his life, um, losing so much in life like the world kind of being against him as it currently is like you don't have to deal with that like you could just like stay in ignorant bliss essentially so all the while that's happening uh megan calls up susan susan rolls over shows up and um uh, megan's slowly figuring out like she's looking at her place and she's like what's this all about because i would like something i was completely missing last episode and even feel was like yeah like something didn't line up I was still under the impression the roadie from last episode that was in the office was 
the still the first roadie. It's like, oh, it didn't die. It's actually uh, the set. Like the roadie went from oh that uh, the Jackson house to their office to um, to uh, Megan. I thought that was the one same roadie each time. But then Phil was like, no, don't blame yourself, August. Roadies never roll in even numbers. And the moment they said that, I was like. It's three, and he was like, "Yeah, could you how?" Because he's like, "Because uh, August is like, how did I miss the second one?" And the moment Phil said, "Like, oh, they never roll in even numbers," I was like, "There are three roadies. That's what this is." I was like, oh, "Okay, like I said, that was something I was missing the entire time." And now with the context of the circles, it makes sense. Like it, it's a trio because they always roll an odd because it's always been like, oh, an odd number of one, but in actuality, it was an odd number of three. It was interesting too because she said like. The roadie says later on, like, oh, my two lives. So, like, maybe, maybe, like, they're kind of, like, one entity split into three. So, it's like, oh, like, it's almost like a cat's nine lives. It's all part of the same cat, but it's nine lives. Maybe the same thing applies sort of in this case of the roadie. It's, like, technically, it's three separate beings, three different roadies. But that's how I was interpreting it, that line of, like, oh, yeah, my two lives. But I guess it's also, like... Right, these are like the other two parts of my life, and they're going out because of your group. But, um, because Susan had set up some cameras, uh, because also, like, Megan was super, like, uncomfortable around August's machine that was destroying, had destroyed the other two roadies. And so, Megan had caught on camera the, uh, like, Susan had caught on camera Megan's eyes, so it's like, right, she's a roadie, okay, and, um, she tried to run, but the thing get look like, first and foremost, Megan going full like exorcist with the the classic possession like turning your head thing. Uh, that's that's a classic, obviously. Um, but also, it's like right these things can stretch body. So like she's trying to run, but I was like, you see her Megan's arms. I'm like probably most likely stretched out to get you. But obviously, I like the kind of bit of hot potato between them because like the moment it's like right, the moment it's in. Um, the moment Megan tosses it to Susan, Susan grabs it, but then the roadie takes control of her. It's like, ha, now I've got it. And then, like, the moment goes into uh, Megan's hands again. It possesses Megan. But it didn't know who it was dealing with because it's like uh, Susan just used her telekinesis to turn it on and so ended up um, getting rid of the roadie. So I was like, wow, that worked out a lot easier than I thought it would. So that... Luckily, Susan is who Susan is, and that thing didn't know what she was capable of, so that worked out perfectly in that regard. So, while that's happening, you know, it's like, because uh, Megan did talk about the fact is that she did find a house, because Susan was like, thinking all this other stuff was related to the um, roadie, which, the, re the reason why the roadie loved Megan's place is pretty much like I thought last episode, it's like, yeah, because of everything associated, like, all that energy, she's, like, all, like, the turmoil, like, all the stuff associated with that, I have all the, I mean, that's why the place is crawling with spirits, like, that comes as no surprise, like, I mean, there's literally, like, a, a portal dimension, like, at, in the basement that's been sealed off, but I guess enough of it's still leaking through, that they're still congregating to that specific place, like, so, that's what drew the roadie's attention, but, Luke ends up crossing paths with, uh, well, his older self. And I was like, is that actually older Luke trying to talk to him? But it's like, eventually as the conversation goes on, you're like, no, no, no. It's a house manifesting itself, telling young Luke every issue that older Luke had just to convince him to stay. You know, as Zoe says, like, uh, it, it's auditioning people to be its replacement, that find a replacement uh, for Nelly that had died earlier in the episode. And so it's auditioning Luke because he's the perfect person because it's like, right, here's one person. And I think he doesn't need much. He just needs like, oh, video games. He needs his drinks. And he's satisfied. He's complacent because this is still all he wants. He just wants a normal childhood and not have to worry about everything. And so older Luke, that's actually the house itself, just saying stuff like, hey, this is what you want. It's actually interesting because what just popped in my head and made me think of the movie Smart House, uh, the one with uh, Katie Seagal. Uh, the Disney movie, like, this is a more supernatural version of that to a certain extent. It's telling him about, like, right, like, the hardships. It's like, dad, your dad is like, well, what about a dad? It's like, yeah, yeah, like, time, you know, takes him away. And, like, your mom. But also, like, what really sold me on, like, it's the house the moment. It's like, oh, you motherless freak. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's the house. Uh, 
It's like, all you have to do is say all you, this is all you want. You can stay here. You never have to worry about the issues of the outside. But despite everything, Luke is like, but I do want more, you know? Um, because like, this is also like, it's hard to say how much is like who Luke was before, like who he is present day coming through in that moment. Or is this just Luke speaking from who he was at 16? It's hard to say. Uh, maybe it's a combination of the two, but whatever the case may be. He speaks about the fact is he wants more, like regardless of like the complications of it, he enjoys what he can do because it's like spirits talk to him and he can talk back to them that maybe he can help them, whether it's finding God or finding whatever it is that they need. Like he like and I was like, oh, that's really sweet and earnest to know, like, right, you just want to help people, you know, because you're able to do something no one else can, you know, and it's like there's so much good that can come from that, you know. And even saying like, oh, this uh, mini golf course, yeah, isn't really a mini golf course. But despite everything, it's like all all that's waiting for him out there, you know. Uh, I forgot the metaphor like he was using that he's like, right, you know what dad always said, you know, uh, ships at harbor, basically, that's not what they're made for. And, he's for, you know, using it, you know, it's like, right, I have this gift and just living a normal life isn't what I, I was given in this opportunity. So because of his gift, as August said, his perspective, it allowed him to break the illusion. And so, you know, it is a, it can be a gift. And, you know, uh, Luke is like, yeah, maybe I guess it can be. So the question is. Is it because Luke broke it on his own? Like, is it because of his abilities and him breaking a spell that completely shattered it? Or was it just because the house was on its last legs and Luke breaking it, it doesn't have anyone to feed off anymore. So it just, because it turns out later on, like after he leaves, like he can sense that the illusion, the spell is gone. So that all worked out. Megan and Susan show up and it's like, right, we'll kind of fill everyone in about everything later, but Luke's made his decision. It's like, I want it to go mainstream, but it's like, no, we're going to do what we do. Like, regardless of like, you know, what the world's kind of going to throw at us, we're still going to do, because got to do what we got to do. We, you know, as Phil says, we got to be us. We can be no one else because, you know, that fits this group so perfectly because this group of misfits, considering who we are, we're really good at what we do and we kind of come together because there was even that thing of like, yo, where am I friends he's like your friends you you don't have anyone but he does because this is also a, a group of misfits of like these are people who accept me for me my my situation and all like i these people haven't been pushed away these people embrace me they stay close to me i embrace them for their respective circumstances and situations too like maybe that's also why him and megan work so well once again i hope we don't like end up at the end of this and like that situation turns sour i hope not like i want megan to stick around i hope that all works out but you never know how this is all gonna play out but uh, i love like it's kind of like yeah like tomorrow we get back to work and we're gonna kick some ass and i love uh susan be like hells yeah we are and then just like august and phil turn to her and she's almost embarrassed like how like into it she just gotten that uh as august would say bodacious uh but then we see at the end, everything in Megan's house, maybe the roadie being there, like, aggravated what was there. Like, maybe its presence really just, like, agitated that house. Or maybe it's always been rambunctious, and now it's just like, right, Megan wasn't aware of what's been going on. Like, everything's been kicking up. Once again, why the roadie probably was even more inclined to go there now. But uh, that's definitely going to be a big thing going forward. Um I still haven't, I think there's 10 episodes in this season. There might be 13, 10 to 13 is kind of usually like the sci-fi like marker. I'm assuming 10. I think I looked it up before. I just don't remember. I'll end up like commenting. Uh, I'll leave a comment down below once I look it up at the, um, uh, never mind. I'll just look it up now. It's 10 episodes, like I, I was kind of thinking. So we got two episodes left. I'm curious. I get the feeling probably... I, I'm curious, like, is the next episode going to be, like... Like, it's not a two-parter, but I'm wondering, like, storyline-wise, will it technically kind of be a two-parter? Or is it just going to be episode nine's going to be, like, one thing, and it's going to set up the season finale? I, I'm curious to see how that uh, ends up playing out. I avoided, obviously, looking at the previews. But uh, I'm excited to see where... Uh, the next episode takes us uh, as, you know, the Roman agency, like how they uh, deal with the aftermath of like their reputation being in the, the, the uh, dumpster. Yes, uh, Luke said like, oh, we're going to go back to work and kick some ass. But like how and what's that going to look like? We'll ultimately have to wait and see. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest and enjoy it. 
good day and goodbye.